Okay, question number seven, part D now. Okay, um, we've done part A, B, and C. And we found that the acceleration of the system was 2 over 5g meters per second squared, which was 3.92 or 3.9. Let me just confirm that. Yep, 2 over 5g meters per second squared. Okay. So it's accelerating this way. Now, it says when B hits the ground, it does not rebound up. Okay, it just hits the ground, a thud, stops there. A continues moving up the plane once B hits the ground. And then as there's, of course, uh, when B hits the ground, the string becomes slack. There's no tension in the string. And as B doesn't bounce up and come down again, the, the string will remain slack after that. However, there will come a point where A will stop or will start to slow down or decelerate because there's no tension pulling up the plane. Okay, it will be deceleration which will be due to the frictional force and due to the weight that's acting down. Okay, so therefore, um, you know, there's going to be a new situation. So it says, find the distance x, y. Now x is where a is at the point where the string was released. So a for sure has moved a distance of um, h meters okay it moves that distance and that's the point at which b hits the ground okay now when it reaches that distance it's reached a certain speed okay it started at rest and reached its speed okay now it's going to be at that speed at the time when b hits the ground this this the speed that a reaches when it hit when it, when it reaches this point when it's moved through H, is the same speed that B has when it hits the ground. Okay, so what we need to do is, or oh, that might help us find that, because once B hits the ground, there's no tension in the string, there's a new situation of um, the particle A at this point. It's a new situation of A, call it A dash. At that point, its final speed at the point when B hit the ground becomes its initial speed in the new situation, and its final speed is going to become zero. Say so it stops there, at that point here, let's call that y, the point where it stops, its final speed is going to be zero. Okay? And this is going to be the distance that it travels. Okay, let's call that s. Alright? And we can try to figure out a way to work out um, this. So first of all, what I need is to find the speed okay, of a and b when B hits the ground. That's what we need to do first. Okay, find out what the speed of A and B are when, they, when B hits the ground. Now it's going to be the same speed for both of them. Okay, so let's take um, particle B. We have S. We're going to use the, the, the equations of motion as we have constant acceleration. Okay, so this is before B hits the ground. This is in the point just before here we hit the ground. So the acceleration of 2 over 5 g meters per second applies in this case. Okay, now I'm going to take down as positive, all right, as it's going down. Okay, b is going down. So the distance it's gone is h. Okay, its initial speed was zero because it was released from rest. Its final speed is what we want to need, what we need, and the acceleration is 2 over 5 g, positive, because down is positive. Okay, so t, I don't think we need it, all right? So we can see, we can use the equation of motion, v squared equals u squared plus 2 as. Now, v is what we have to find, so v squared equals u squared is 0, plus 2 times 2 over 5 g times h, which is our s there. So v squared is equal to 4 over 5 times g h, okay? So therefore v is equal to the square root of that. I'll just leave it in this form. 4 over 5 times g h. That's meters per second. Okay, so that's the speed of b when it hits the ground. And that's also the speed of a when it starts its uh, motion and the new situation when the string becomes slack when there's no tension now in the string okay so let's look at 
A. Let's just draw a little diagram here to show what's happening to A. Okay, at this in this new situation. So basically, here you have A. In oops, here you have A in the new situation. Okay, it's moving at a speed of the square root of 4 over 5 gh okay that's its initial speed now in the new situation that's its initial speed it's at the point x and it's going to reach the point y at the point y its speed which we'll call the final speed is going to be zero why did I put a zero there okay all right now it's a um, it's not an X, sorry. X is down here. X is where it started from. Okay, that's where it started from. It travelled a distance of H meters. Okay, it travelled a distance of H meters before the string broke. When the string broke, this is where the new situation is. Here, the string, okay, there's no more tension. The only forces acting on this now are the f the component the the friction and the component of the weight acting down okay the slope okay so the friction we already found and that doesn't change okay the friction we found in the previous part of the question the friction we found was 2 mg over 5 okay 2 mg over 5 was the friction so i can put that over here so this is the friction, which is equal to 2 mg over 5. And this is the component of the weight down the, down the slope, which was, if we go back here, it was 2 mg sine alpha. 2 mg sine alpha, okay, which was 6 over 5 mg. 6 over 5 mg is this force here. So you've got 6 over 5 mg. Okay, so what we can say, the only force is acting upon the particle P now, no, sorry, the particle A now, okay, are these two forces. And it's moving in this direction. So I'm going to take up the plane as positive as that's the direction it's moving in. So I can say that minus 2mg over 5, minus 6mg over 5 is equal to mA. Okay, so now we have the resultant force acting upon the particle A, and that's going to be minus 6 mg, sorry, minus 8 mg over 5. Minus 8 mg over 5 is equal to ma. So that means the acceleration that it's under is minus 8 over 5 g. Okay, so it equals 2 ma. Sorry about that. We know that the, the mass of A is 2 m. So that should say 2 ma. So, excuse me for that. That's going to be a 4. And that's going to become a 1. So A is going to be minus 4 over 5 g. The m's cancel out. The 2 and the A cancel give you 4, so you're left with A is equal to minus 4 over 5 mg. So minus 4 over 5 g. Okay, so that is acceleration now under the new situation. Okay, so we have a new situation, okay, starting from the point where, okay, um, the string becomes slack once B hits the ground. So the new situation is, it's, there's an, an acceleration, actually a deceleration, so actually in this direction of 4 over 5 mg, or 4 over 5 g, that's acceleration. Okay, and we know that its initial speed was 4 over root 4 over 5 gh, its final speed was 0, and we need to find what this distance is. This is, we're going to call it s. Okay, and the answer to the question is how far it's moved from x to where it stops. So it's going to be this distance h plus this distance x. s, sorry. So let's find the distance s by using the Suvat equations. Okay, so if we consider it, we've got S, we've got S, is what we have to find, U, V, A, and T. Now S is what we have to find. 
u is the square root of what we have earlier 4 over 5 gh 4 over 5 gh all of that is under the square root v is 0 because we want to find coming to rest and the acceleration is minus 4 over 5 g taking up the plane as positive okay because that's where it's moving so again we can use v squared equals u squared plus 2 a s now v is 0 u squared is going to be basically 4 over 5 g h so have to square that okay, you can leave it in this form and plus 2 times a is minus 4 over 5 g and s is what we have to find so we have to go to rearrange this to find what s is now what I'm going to do you can't do this in your paper but I'm going to just use the extension of this so that I don't have to turn over the page but you would have to turn over the page of course so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this is 0 equals 4 over 5 gh minus gh minus 8 over 5 g times s okay so let's um, bring this to this side so 8 over 5 g times s okay 8 over 5 g times s equals 4 over 5 g times h we've got to find what s is the g's cancelled out the 5's cancelled out the 2 4 and the 8 cancels out so you're left with 2s equals h I'm going to find what s is. s is equal to h over 2. Okay, so it's traveled another half h on the way up. So it's traveled h from x to the point where the string broke, plus another half h. So the total distance is traveled. The distance between x and y okay, is equal to h plus h over 2. So x, y is equal to 1.5 h or... 3h over 2 if you want. Okay, so there we have our answer for part D. Okay, I hope that was quite clear. That was a bit of a, a lengthy question. Um, and I think that was the last question of the paper, so that's what they do sometimes. It keeps you busy at the end. So there we have it, the answer to question 7 completed.